I put at the beginning, they would never want to switch to Cody. So as time goes on, I just get, now it's half the course is WordPress. So, uh, and consequently, I find myself, uh, I sort of morphed into this little contract position, which has been lots of fun being a WordPress coach. I didn't really want to take on long-term projects, though I am doing two at this time, because they do take a long time. You could spend months on one website with someone just because you know, right now, for example, I've got one I'm waiting for her to get headshots, and another one, you know, people are busy, it's hard to get content. So I prefer to do things that don't take as long. Uh, so what I do, I started doing was helping people, probably something like themselves, who have a WordPress site. Maybe they're, you know, they're a service, they're a consultant, they're a small business, somebody built them a WordPress site five or six years ago. They can't find that person anymore, and they don't know what to do with the site. And they really want to be independent. So they don't want to have to say, okay, in two years from now, I'm somewhere else, who's going to help me? So I started thinking, hmm, maybe the better idea is sort of like the old, you know, teach a man to fish, give a man a fish. So I mean, if I spent time with these people, because if somebody builds your WordPress site and they show you a dashboard and how to add a blog or how to do this and that, and then you don't do it for six months, so it's easy to forget. And some people do find, find it a little challenging. So I started looking at um, other things, and I, one of my clients said to me, wow, I wish it was more like, you know, gee, wouldn't it be fabulous if it was if designing a website was more like a WordPress, a, a Microsoft Word document, where you just highlight things, you know, I highlight the sentence, I change the font, change the color, change the size, all this kind of stuff. So then somebody mentioned Divi to me. This is about, not that long, to be honest with you, probably in the spring, and at that time, it was having a sale. So can't resist a sale, it's half price. And uh, it was their anniversary. So I, I wish I could remember the date offhand, but it was sometime in the spring. So if you want to check that out, and it was on for half price. And it's not expensive. So I thought, okay, I'll, I'll try it. And then I found this whole visual builder thing. When they first started, they did, he didn't have the front stuff that I'm going to show you. Uh, but now, the, and it is very intuitive. So I showed it to a couple of clients and they just loved it. So that's why I thought it would make an interesting presentation for here, so that's where I'm coming from. So what is Divi? It's a theme, like I said, by a company called Elegant Themes. They do a lot of stuff, but this is their, their flagship. And it's basically got a front-end editor that lets you change things visually. So you can add content, you can change the design, you can change formats, 
And you can see it all happen in real time, which is what I think a lot of people like. Not just, you know, I like actually like writing code, but I do find this so fast and so easy that um, it just kind of hooked me. So it allows you to click and type. It allows you also responsive editing. So that means you can have set a font size for a computer, for a tablet, and a different font size for a phone. So it does all of that stuff for you. Like I said, the layouts can be saved to your, to your library. And it comes with things called content modules. So you basically add one to your, your web page, and it'll do things like add a form, add a counter, uh, images, photo galleries, like all these little things. So these are the modules. And, that's a, and it changes all the time. So one of the things I really like about it is it's easy. They've got tons and tons of tutorial videos. They've got a really good support, which I find is very, very important. So it's about 89 US. So when I got it, it was about 40 US. So there you go, yeah. for a year. Or 250 US for life. Um, it lets you add CSS if you want. So you can add uh, styles to it in about five different places. Or if you want, you can create a child theme the same way you would create a child theme from any other theme. You can contact them and get back to you right away. Like I am, have to admit, I can be fairly lazy and I don't like reading documentation, but they've got all these great videos, tons and tons, almost too much at first for me, because I went, oh my goodness, I have to go through all this stuff to learn this way. So if I wanted to buy something, sometimes I would just shoot them off, you know, those little pop-up screens that come up and say, how can we help you, and type of question. They get back very quick, so that saved me a lot of time looking through all their help and tutorials. And one thing I really like is those new features and custom layouts. Every week they come up with something new, so it's always being improved. So they'll send you out an email, they'll tell you, okay, we just added this great new feature in, or we've just given you a brand new layout. So uh, one of the new features is a find and replace. So if you're used to um, Microsoft Office, you'll know what find and replace is, and I'll give you a good example of how that works in a minute. And like I said, it's very intuitive. They have this thing called a role editor. So um, as you may be aware with WordPress, you can be an administrator, you can be a writer, a contributor, there's diff different roles. So it's got this, um, comes with this package that allows you to pinpoint every single thing, like all the different modules, roles, sections, everything it does, and decide which things people can handle, which things people can do, for each role. So that's really nice when you're the developer. And a new standalone plugin has come out recently that you can, only if you subscribe to Divi, but it's a plugin like Elementor, if you've heard of that. So it works with any other theme. So if you're not using Divi as a theme, if you've got another theme that you like, but you just like the idea of being able to add block elements and you know, lay your page out that way, you can use the Divi plugin with virtually any theme out there. I just wrote a review on it, so obviously I haven't tried it with every theme out there, but the reviewer said he tried it with many themes and he didn't find one that it didn't work well with, so I'm going along with that review. So who is Divi for? I would say it's a great tool for anyone that's new to WordPress and web design. Most important, I do agree with what Morton said earlier, and this is you know, sort of a guiding principle we have at BCIT as well, is that everyone should have the opportunity to learn to code, or to learn to build something, or to get into the digital world, and not just be sort of passive users of digital technology. And why shouldn't you be able to build a really nice website, and be able to maintain it yourself, uh, and not really know how to code? So this will give you the ability to create anything you can dream of. Because I tried it, when I first got it, I tried it out. I took some sites that I had built with like CSS and HTML uh, for my classes, and I thought, I want to be able to reproduce this exactly using this sort of drag and drop, can I do this? And yes, I could do it in a very, very short space of time. So, and then if you don't want, I've showed other people some of their layouts, and they've just said, oh, I like that layout, I'll take the layout, and I'll just customize it for myself. So it gives everyone, like I said, the opportunity to have a really nice looking site, 
But also, if you are a freelance web designer, you might appreciate the fact that you can get up to speed really quickly with this as well, and it's not expensive. So I can see it working for both. So let's see how it works. There, this is their, one of their slogans. You can build anything visually. So they've got two forms of the builder. This is the back-end standard builder. It's called. This is how it first started off. So this is in the dashboard. And these blocks you see are just things that you add to it. I use this sometimes when I just want to move things around really, really quickly because I use a Mac and I have a trackpad. So if I want to drag something from the bottom of a page to a top, sometimes it doesn't work very well for me. So I like to use this one. And this is the same thing in the front. So this is what it looks like if you use the front end visual builder. You see all your work as you're, as you're going through. And you just click add and you'll see what I mean in about two seconds. So it starts with sections. So sections are the largest container. That's where everything goes inside. Inside the section, you determine the number of rows. So that could be, you know, you can have as many rows as you want inside a section. As far as I know, there's no limit. So that's when you would determine, is this gonna be like a three column? Do I want four, do I want two, do I want one? And then inside the row are the modules. So those are those elements that contain things like forms and images and text and on and on goes. And you can have as many modules as you want inside a row. Okay, so I put these in to tell myself where to stop. So I've got a few things set up. So I'm inside, obviously inside uh, the dashboard right now. Now I'm gonna go to pages. And the home page. Okay. So this is what it looks like in, it's a bit big here, let me just see if I can make this. This is what it looks like. So this is your regular inside page, your post builder. Normally you would see the regular WordPress one, but in this view, you get to add a section, then a row, which is green, so blue, green, and then the gray are the little modules, so the text, the button, blurbs, different things like that. You can grab them here. I don't want to mess up my display, so I'm not going to move anything around right now. But if I go to the front end of this and take a look, this is what, oops, this is what the front end looks like. Okay, so this is just a little page. So right now I'm working, this is not exactly it, but I'm working on um, a site for a young woman who's just graduated from SFU as an editor and copywriter. This is not her, but it looks a bit like her. <laughs> her name's on Jane Average, but I just did this for uh, illustration purposes. I'm just trying to see. Okay, there we go. So this is basically what Divi looks like when you've got the visual builder installed. And you'll see there's a button up here on the toolbar that says Enable Visual Builder. So I'm just going to click on that. <clears throat> so this is what would happen. You go to the, your site, you would enable Visual Builder, and then you can start working on it. So give it a second. All right, so when this comes up, I don't know, hopefully you can see. When I'm moving my mouse over, you'll see that I have a blue border. So that is the section, the blue section. And then inside the blue section, I have a row, the green, and inside of that, which is the dark gray, is the, um, the modules. And they all have the same buttons. So they all have the same controls. We have to start with, um, <clears throat> this is to move. So if you wanna move the module, you can just drag it around anywhere you want. There's the gear uh, icon, which is for settings, which I'll show you in a moment. You can duplicate. You can save this to your library. So remember I mentioned if you create something you really want, like want to reuse it, you save it to your library. You can delete and then this closes this thing. So let's just take a quick look at settings. So the settings are going to change for the different type 
of uh, structure you're in, but there's more in the module, so that's where I'm going to go. This settings panel as well, you can move, you can dock it on the left side, but I'm going to leave it here. You can change the size to make it a bit bigger. It has three sections. One is for your content and shows your, your text. Uh, you can do a few things here under content, like um, change the backgrounds, add a you know image or color. And if you want more um, settings, you click on the design tab, and it will give you things like you can change the sizing, the spacing. So this is your padding, your borders. Uh, your borders are down here rather. Uh, lots and lots and lots of different styles, box shadows. And then at the bottom, you've got animation, so you can have things come in, appear, disappear. And then you've got your advanced tab where you can add custom CSS. Okay. All right. Now, the button is also a module, so you can add buttons anywhere. You just click and add. We're going to start with a blank page, but I just wanted to show you a few things first. So let's say, for example, these are called blurbs comes with an icon, you click the icon, um, heading text, and then you put your whatever paragraph text you want underneath. So if I click on this, I have, I just want to show you one of the new things that came out with recently, is this find and replace, which I love. So let's say I've got three blurbs, they've all got an icon with a circle around the icon. So I'm going to go into where it says design, and because this is a blurb and it comes with an icon, it has uh, different, uh, some different settings because of the icon. So this is under image and icon. So let's say I want to change the, the gray background to all these circles. So rather than having to do three, I can use find and replace on one to find and replace the color in all the blurbs. So this. So right here, I would come down to where it says circle color, and if I right click, I'll get find and replace. And this will open up, and it's gonna find circle with this gray color, and then I can change it to something else. Let's just say it's gonna be, um, I'll never remember I'll just change it to something, there we go. And then I'll click replace, and it replaces the color in all of them. So it's got these neat little things that, like I say, you know, that's this week. Next week, it'll be something else. And then when you've made a change, you can either, you know, accept it, or if you've made too many mistakes, you can just say, forget it. But I, I want to keep that one. Um, other nice little modules they have, these are called toggles. So you can use these, work well for FAQs. You know, you can have things in there. This is a different section. This is another section with three testimonial modules in. So often what you can do when you create one is you can just duplicate it and add two more to it rather than starting from scratch. Um, other, like this is a text module, another text module with um, a nice button. This form here is an email opt-in form, it's called. So if you want to get email addresses, it, it, it's very intuitive, but they also have like a video tutorial, if you're not too sure this thing works, to connect it to your email service provider. And then of course we've got some social media buttons. So let's, I'm going to leave this one for a moment, and if I don't say, which I always forget to do, it's going to remind me. At the bottom you have a set of icons and controls for the page itself, where you have your save. And these um, buttons here uh, are basically the same where you can load from library, which we'll get into in a second, save to library, delete. Uh, there's an interesting little editing history panel. For those of you who've ever worked with uh, Photoshop, if, you know, the history panel, you can go back in time and, you know, if you mess things up. But over here we have um, a nice interesting set of controls here where you can get a wireframe view, because sometimes if you're working with a writer, copywriter, they may want to see a wireframe. So this is what it looks like uh, in that view. There's a bird's eye view, which I really like. 
page from far back, even at this view, you can still edit and make changes. Then, of course, we've got the desktop, the um, tablet, and the phone. So you get all those views as well. So let me just go back to a brand new page right now. So let's say I just created this page in my dashboard. Because I, I'm using the Divi theme, so once you become a Divi member, you go to their website, you download the theme, you upload it through the themes panel, and you activate it. So then when you open a page or a, or a blog post, this is what you'll see using the Builder. So um, I'm going to click on that. So then I get this look. So it automatically, as soon as you turn it on, will give you a section and a row, because you have to have that. So what I'm going to do is just say, I don't want this view. I want to use the Visual Builder view. So I'm going to go into that. So when you're starting off on a brand new page and you're switching into the Visual Builder, it gives you three choices to build from scratch, use a pre-made layout, one of their layouts, or to clone an existing page. So if I had a page I really liked and I just want to use it again, I could do that. I'm going to come back to pre-made layouts later, but we're just going to start from scratch. Okay. So first thing it's going to ask you, because there is a section in there, is what do you want for your row? Do you want gives you a nice selection of column layouts. I'm going to go with this one. And then it asks you to insert a module. So what type of content do you want to put in that row? So I'm going to say text, because I know all these. And uh, it gives you some default text, so you don't need to find some lorem ipsum text. So I'm going to call this, I'm just going to change this from paragraph here to heading one, so I have a heading, and I will save that. Then I see, when you see this plus sign, that means you can add a module to it. Okay? So I'm going to move over here into the second module, because I said I wanted two columns. One is wider, so it's like two-thirds and one-third of the width. And this I'm just going to put an image. I'm just doing ones that I can do quickly. And I'm going to take my macaroon picture and just upload that. Okay. So this is where, now we've got this, this is where it starts to feel more like a word processor. So I can click in here. When I click in my text, I get this additional toolbar that pops up that allows you to do things you can see. Maybe you can't see them in the back, but you can bold, you can change the font, you can change text alignments, all that color. So I can start typing, so I can add extra text. So I can just type right into it. I can highlight that text. I can change it. I can open this little thing. I can make it bigger. This is like a bit of a shortcut uh, from the um, design. And if this stuff gets in your way, when I first started using it, this was the thing that bugged me about it, was I don't like a cluttered workspace. I don't like a lot of stuff around. So it did take a little bit of getting used to. Um, but you just hit your escape key generally and all this goes away. Uh, so let's just go in for a second and take a quick look. I'm going to add another thing here. And some more text. Uh, just to add an extra paragraph. OK. Now, if I want to change the um, font for responsive design. So I'm in the text module now. I'll go over to the design side where I see text options. So if I come down here to say uh, text size, when I hover over text size, I'll see a little icon for the, for the phone. And if I click on that, it'll show me that I can change the font for tablet, and so I can make it a bit smaller if I want, and then for phone. So it gives you those three options, which is nice. I'm not actually going to do that. I just wanted to show you where, where it is. And if I want to add a nice 
background. Got a bit of time here. Just to see the size of this, I'm going to go into my background settings. So I'm in the section now, section settings. Behind all this, I can add like a little gradient if I want, or just some color. Ooh, that's what I want. So you can add, you know, second color. It has all these. You just play around. You get all these really nice things, and just to give it a bit of color, so you can see the size of it. Then when I hover over, so I can see my blue, which is the section, the green, which is the row, and I come down here. I see a plus. So if you see a plus, means you can add another one. And if it's blue, it's a section. If it's green, it's a row. If it's gray, it's a module. So if I add a new section, I have three choices. Regular, specialty. So specialty are all these really uh, complex uh, sections with sidebars and stuff, which is not what I want to do. Or I can add from library. But in this case, I'm just going to go with full width. And I think I have a bit of time to show you some of the kind of fun little things that are really quick to do. So we have a, a circle counter. So you know these things, right? So you can say, um, so return customers. And uh, let's see, let's give ourselves 90% of our customers return. So it can be as easy, as quick as that, as adding something in. Another one would be a number counter. Um, so in this case, it's macaroon number of flavors. And under elements, you can turn off the percent sign. So you'll have, you know, those ones you see number of coffees drank, number of customers, number of this, number of that. Um, another one would be the pricing tables. So You've seen pricing tables where you'll have maybe three or four, and there's one that's highlighted. So maybe you're a bronze member, silver, whatever, somebody's signing up. I'm going to just delete one of these. So usually you just look for the, the gear, right, the gear icon. And so let's say this would be a bronze membership. And I'm not going to put the subtitle. button text, so I'll just do this quick. So you'll get a nice little table. And if it's if you like it, you can, I'll just hover over this for a moment. Here's the duplicate button, so I'm gonna duplicate this. It always goes below, and then I can use the move feature, drag it up, get as many as I want, Get my three or four, and then under the um, design tab, like I said, it's, it's, there's a lot of similarities to them. If there's text, there's always title text, body text, subheader, but it gives you all the different elements of the module that you can change, and you can just play around. So you can add stuff like really fast, really quick. It all works, um, and I am getting close to the end here, so. I'm going to switch back to this and show you how the library works. And I want to show you some of the pre-made layouts. So this here, I'm going to, it's another site I'm kind of working on, but I changed it so you wouldn't know the client. I'm waiting for her to get her own photos done. These are obviously stock photos. So she's a career consultant. And uh, I'm working on a site with her. So what I would do is like set it up through uh, one of their pre-made layouts, just use some of the content from her existing site. So let's say I like certain things in here. I like this rope here with the golden or yellow uh, blocks in it. So what I did is I saved it to the library of this site and called it yellow rope because I came up with any other names. <laughs> so all my names are like really awful, but. Uh, one thing I was going to say too is I found with the library is you can save multiple things with exactly the same name. So when I first started using it, I was thinking it's going to be like you know your operating system where it's going to put a one in front of it or a two. But then I opened it up and I realized I had you know God knows how many fab rows or you know my <laughs> row or you know all these things. But anyway, so uh, 
yeah, this one is called, so anyway, so let's say I come in here and I think, oh, you know what? This site should have one of those yellow rows like right here between these two sections. So I would come here and I would add a new section. So just anywhere you can click on the blue, you'll see you'll get a plus sign for add a new section. When this comes up, um, I'm going to use a regular section and I'm going to add a row because I saved it as a row. So you have to remember what you save it as. Is it a module? Is it a row? Is it a section? Because it won't come up under um, load from library if you're adding a new section and it's a row. So here, I see the tab, add from library, and here's yellow row. So when I add this in, I get that row exactly. So what I can do now is obviously change the text and maybe the colors or something else. But once you've spent the time building something, especially if it's got gradients because they can take a little time to get the colors right and everything else, why not save it and reuse it? So what you do is in the first site that has the thing that you want, you save it to your library there. Then you go into the library and you export. And if I can get back into it, I will show you right now. So when you um, exit, sorry, it's gonna take a moment. Okay, so down here, when we're in the dashboard, whenever you uh, load a premium theme, you'll see that it usually has its own set of uh, customizers. So this has the regular theme customizer that you've probably seen a million times, but it also has a module customer customizer. So you can go in, the modules are things like the text, you know, all those counters and everything else, and you can do some sort of basic customizing to them. But here, uh, remember I said there was a thing called a role editor? So if you're a developer or just in charge of a site working with other people, uh, you can assign people as administrators, editors, authors, and contributors. And then here's all these things that you can enable or disable depending on the person. So there's lots and lots and lots of features for that. And then the library is here. Okay, so here's the library. So here's like yellow row. So what I would do is I have X, I would select it from my other site and I would click import export and I would export it to my computer and it's saved as a JSON file. So it just goes to your downloads and then you go to the site you want to import to, you open up your library, you click import export, import, grab the JSON file and boom, it's in your library. So a uh, really handy feature there. So that's how that one works. And now I'm going to go back to pages and I think I have a couple of minutes. I'm just gonna go into this pre-made layout one and show you how that thing works. And then we'll take questions. All right, use Divi Builder. Visual Builder. All right, so when this page opens, it's gonna again ask us if we wanna use pre-made layout. So I'm going to say yes to that. And they literally send, I, I think it's almost one a week. They've got a really good team of people that work on these things. So since I started putting this presentation together two weeks ago, they have created one for a funeral home and one for a political candidate. So I thought that was very interesting. What should we do? Maybe political candidate might be a hot one. So seriously, yeah, they just did that one. So uh, they have all, like I said, 78 layout packs. And it's not just one page. So I'm just going to go to this design agency one, for example. And you can view the live demo, but what I like about it is they give you a whole spectrum of pages that go with that layout. So it's not just a landing page. Um, it's also an about page, a blog page, case studies, contacts, portfolios. So, you know, 10, sometimes as many as 10 pages. So if you've got a client, and so, like I said, I work with people who, you know, I'm trying to get to uh, teach them how to fish. Is some of them choose something like this, and then you can just set it up. They can just edit it. They can change the colors. They can upload their own images, change the text. They just use more of some text uh, other than the headings, so it's it's easy to to change. Or sometimes when you work with people as well, you say, what kind of websites do you like? I don't know. You can browse this whole gallery of layouts. Because just because it's for a tea shop doesn't mean you can't use it for something else. So mostly the layouts are um, 
small to medium sized businesses or like for consultants. So you name it, they've got garages, they've got insurance, they've got dentists, uh, all kinds of like B&Bs, tons and tons and really nice stuff. So it comes out, uh, like I said, two or three a month. They just send you and say, we've got this new layout. Why not use them? And they they come with the package. So anyway, um, I find these really, they, they do a really nice job. Okay, I should have actually added one to that. That's okay. I can get, so if I decide to use this, I'll say use this layout. It may take a minute to um, add. I'm not sure how fast things are here. So, oh, there we go, good. And then there it is. So once it's in, you can start customizing. So there's your the site. So then you just take out what you want. There's all your counters, all these things, why we're different. And then, uh, you can add in, so if you go to the Your About page, once you've set up your menu, then you can check out their About layout and add it in, and, and on and on you go, and you get to use as well, I don't think it matters, but any of their images, they're all probably from Unsplash or something. Okay, so I think I have hit the end of my time. Um, so Maybe five minutes for questions. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'll just go down to, to uh, questions now. and. Anybody has anything? I'm sorry, I had to go. There they are. This is a gentleman right here. Oh, hi. Like, can you help us understand um, the import and export that you showed us? For the library? Yes. Um, does that include media? Yes. It does. Yes. Thanks for asking that. That's something I really like about it too, is it takes, it imports all the images and all the media that you were using for that layout or that section or that row and drops it right into your uh, your new website. In the back there? I'm following a little bit on what Morton talked about this morning with accessibility. Do you have any, any info on how this stacks up with your accessibility? Yeah, they keep right on top of that. They do. I must yeah. say, yeah, that's one thing I was I mentioned in the beginning that I really liked about this theme is that they're constantly improving it, they're constantly updating it, and keeping up with things like accessibility standards. Yeah, I know with page builders, that's often the challenges. Pardon me? I know with page builders, that can often be a challenge. Yes, yeah, yes so it can. Okay, that's, that's yeah, they, have a, they really do have a team of people working on this stuff all the time. So anything that's sort of a little old or out of the way, it kind of quietly disappears and, and the new comes in. Yes? I'm not sure if I need to WordPress, so uh, do you need to worry about child themes and all that? None if you don't want to. Okay. It's there if you do. Okay. So as you're making changes, like if you are using custom CSS. I, I don't even know. Oh, okay. Is. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Let yeah. me uh, drag and drop. And okay, then that. you don't have to care at all. Because all of that settings panel I showed you with the content design and advanced, just ignore the advanced tab okay. and stay with the content okay. and the design. You can change almost anything. There's just a couple of things that you know people might want to use code because they can't find the exact thing for, but if you want, you know, yeah, no. And then you just save it and it's your your original layout, your your design. Yes? Uh, what about the care and feeding of the of the Divi theme in terms of upgrading and ownership of the theme? Like if you're coming in as a developer and, and the client used a previous developer and then it's like, oh, I don't know how to get into this theme to do an upgrade. Well, according to their site, you can, with your membership, you can load it on as many sites as, as you want. So even if you were working on a theme that was for a client, you could just load that into another instance and be able yeah, to... Yeah, because even, like I was saying, the plugin they designed is designed to work with other themes. So uh, if you don't use the full Divi theme, like say they have a theme that they're using that they really like, but you want to use the back-end builder, the standard builder, not the visual builder, then you can just use their plugin and it'll work with any theme and your license for, for that as a developer. But what if you're just trying to upgrade their, their theme? You're managing, you come in and start to manage their site and you don't have access because they, somebody else owns the theme. Is there a way to... Oh, that to, yeah. I oh, oh, uh, I haven't so run across the, that yet. The, this is for both of us, like if you're a web developer or an individual designer, you can use that. 
and they don't say that you cannot use for your client, you can use that. But when you want to update your theme or something, they provide you an API key, so you don't have to share their uh, username or the password with others. You just have to install the API key when you are installing their elegant or your DVD theme, right? So when you upgrade from on the top of the dashboard, it will be upgraded to the latest as per whatever they have on the table. So it's just an API key, that is what uh, you have to put it in your client side, so they won't see any of your user details for that. Oh, that makes sense. Yes? Um, so for some of these things, are you amending monthly portal? You pay annually. Annually. Or lifetime. So uh, as I was saying earlier, it's 89 US uh, for a year unless you get the half price special uh -huh. or 250 for a lifetime membership. So if you're going to use, I just, I guess it took the half price one just to see if I liked it. And I do. So I'll probably switch to the lifetime one after this. Sorry. Yeah. When you're late. Sorry. Go when, ahead. when you lay out uh, rows and you're choosing your layout, is it all based on uh, wide screens or is there a mobile first approach that you can take? It, it is. Uh, all the modules and structures are all responsive. But the, the things that you can set responsive design for would be like the text sizes and stuff like that. But they all are. Um, so yeah, it all works really well. You can see there's a row of buttons at the bottom, so you can view your design at, on a phone or, or a tablet. So, yeah, it works really well. They're, they're all responsive. Yes, sorry. Um, how's the page speed for this page? How's the what? Page speed. Like, is it fast? Yes. Fast? Yes. It well depends on your. Uh, right. Generally, I I'm not sitting there, you know, going, where is this thing? Why isn't it loading? It's it's, it's very fast. Yeah. No, not from a user perspective, but from a browser's perspective. Like, you know how things can be loading? Oh, 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 sorry, sorry, didn't hear that. No, I, it does load very quickly, yes. I don't, I, just, I have not run into any issues or heard any complaints so far. But yeah, it seems to be working quite quickly with the browser. Yeah, it's just not like, you know, I know what you mean, like it's, some of them are, are quite slow, yeah. yeah. I, I, I actually had to overcome that, because when I first started doing this, with uh, these themes, I ran into people that had bought themes, you know, online, and they couldn't figure out how. There were no documentation. And it was just some of them were just like the worst things. So it really gave me a bad impression of themes. So it took me a while to come around to something like this. But I find this one. I haven't really found any buggy issues or problems like that with it yet. So I can see why it's become the most popular theme. Sorry. Yes. So I had a question regarding if the client wants to not use Divi anymore. When you disable it, does it leave a bunch of short circuits and a bunch of like and stuff that you then like are stuck having to like manually fix? I have tried it. Have you guys got yeah? Yeah, it's frustrating. Yeah, like I said, just started using about four months ago. So, so like, yes, that's a problem. Yeah. That's the short like because you're creating in their pages, right? So yeah. when you're doing there is a DV, there are short costs. The new versions that what you use, the IP, and the short costs that is going to be there. When you move on, <coughs> but there is a script available uh, on the GitHub. You can just go and get there and remove all the shortcuts that you can imagine. Get out. <laughs>